in light of the uh, attacks on Paris, France uh, last night, uh, well, on the 13th, in the late evening, early morning, uh, you know, video movies and things seem a lot less important. Yeah, life does go on, and uh, of course, our thoughts are with the folks, both the uh, those who lost someone, and there are 121 deaths and 353 wounded, some of whom may end up dead uh, from this tragedy that took place uh, in Paris. And I'm not going to get into you know anything. I'm not going to politicize this like some have done in this country. Uh, there's no point in that. The, the true thing to do is just to mourn those who have lost. Uh, who, who have who have been lost and and give sympathy out and prayers out to those who remain uh, behind having to deal with this tragedy uh, and and I suppose uh, the other appropriate thing to do is you know pray for this world that uh, you know we, we try to find a way to have peace you know this community is a good example you know we've got people from uh, all different countries <clears throat> anybody who uses YouTube and that's pretty much just about everybody I guess and this community of movie lovers, uh, Blu-ray lovers, DVD lovers, whatever you want to call it, um, has been a good, a good, uh, a good community, made up of a wide variety of people. And um, I'm a firm believer that maybe it's the uh, optimist in me coming up, but I'm a firm believer that people can get along, and that, uh, yeah, that uh, the world can have peace at some point. I just don't know when that'll be. And that area in particular is a very complex area. The, 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 ultimately, the problems that the, the area has are simple, but complex to fix, like most problems are. Uh, there's no easy solutions to the Middle Eastern issue. There's no easy solutions to the wrongs that uh, ISIS feels or Al-Qaeda feels have been done upon them <clears throat> um, or their leaders or... Or you know, there's no there's no easy solutions to these things, and and you, you hope that um, you hope that everybody eventually can find some sort of a compromise position and, and be okay. But it's not going to be easy. Uh, until then, we hope that uh, calmer heads prevail in most situations. Uh, but it's, I think it's important not to blame all Muslims or all people who are of Islamic faith, because there's a lot of people, and um, certainly they're not all responsible for these events. And so after, just like after 9-11, you know, there was a somewhat of a Muslim Islamic backlash in this country. I, I hope that doesn't occur again. Um, there's plenty of good Muslims and plenty of good uh, people who follow Islam. And, and um, you know, a, a handful of, of folks don't make a bad group. Okay, with all that said, and I guess that's about all I have to say about it now. What else can you say really except for it's a tragedy? Uh, I'm, I am going to move on to movies. Um, life does go on. <clears throat> and I did pick up some things. So I'm going to show some... Let me squeeze this stuff over here. I'm going to show some Criterions, uh, which just came in the mail. i got two packages here from Barnes & Noble. Of course, they're having their 50% off. So I think that's all I'm going to get is these two. Uh, not that I don't want more, believe me. But um, I've, I've uh, set aside... It is, it is getting time for the Christmas season. And we all know what that means. It's the time to give, not to get. And I do give myself some, some things, but it's also the time to give to others. And, I'm, of course, having uh, uh, four children at home and then another one uh, that lives uh, with his wife uh, in D.C., the D.C. area. Um, it's You need to have some, some cash. So, first of all, let me show you, okay, just some things that I picked up recently here. I don't think I've shown these before. Maybe one of them I have. I don't believe I've shown any of the other ones before. First of all, Best Buy exclusive. This is the uh, Blu-ray, the DVD, and the digital HD of the Disney Pixar movie, uh, Inside Out. I went with this version as opposed to any of the other ones. Uh, this one has five cards that can go in here that, can, that you can uh, use to uh, change the front of your look, if you will. Let's take these out real quick and show you what I mean. I haven't watched this movie yet, but I think this is Joy, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, on the back it tells me it's Joy. It tells you a little bit about the character. There's always a way to turn things around to find the fun. 
Well, I guess that's probably true, and, and today's probably a good day to be reminded of that. But then there's also fear. All right, we did not die today. I call it an unqualified success. Yeah. And fear. And we've got disgust. Oh, she did not just say that as a quote on the back. Yeah. And then we have sadness, it looks like. Yeah, sadness. Goodbye, friendship. Hello, loneliness is on the back here. Actually, either you know, you could actually display either one of these if you wanted to, either side. This one, of course, goes in the front and fits in the little hole, but the other one, a little open, I should say, the other one would, would go great on the wall. And you've got uh, anger. Urgh. Congratulations, San Francisco. You ruined pizza. And then you've got uh, anger. Yeah. Really neat little cards, though, that go in there. And so, depending on your mood, I suppose, you can put any number of the the uh, cards down in any one of the cards down in there and, and make a different, little bit different cover looking cover but inside out uh, of course these are all the emotions I haven't seen the movie so I don't know a lot about it but they're all the emotions that, of a I guess a girl <clears throat> that they are part of Riley's first date I guess it's Riley I, I don't know the movie at all I just heard it was really good and I wanted to pick it up and watch it <clears throat> Same with this one. Well, I haven't heard this one's really good. I know the general plot of this one. I remember when it was was first showing the uh, the trailer on television. I'm not going. To, I'm not paying to see that in the theater because it cost me like seventy bucks to take all four of the kids and get popcorn and everything. It wasn't a seventy dollar event. Now, Star Wars when it comes out, yeah, that'll be a seventy dollar event for me. I'll take all the kids to that. Uh, probably since we saw all the other ones in the theater, probably. Uh, the final part of the um, Hunger Games episodes. We'll, we'll probably see that in the theater. This is uh, Pixels. This one's in the th in 3D. I don't have a 3D player, but it was the same price. I just thought the slipcover looked cool. And I thought, well, since it's the same price, I could sell it. I could sell the 3D probably to somebody. I, I've sold those before for like 10 bucks on eBay, believe it or not. So pretty cool. Uh, basic plot is, I guess, Aliens... Uh, yeah, when aliens misinterpret video feeds of classic arcade games as a declaration of war against them, they attack the Earth using games like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Centipede, and Space Invaders. Th those were my games, by the way. I remember all those. Uh, those are very dated, but those are all great games, by the way. Uh, so I thought this would be perfect uh, to check out. I'm imagining you get the sound effects of uh, Pac-Man as he, as he rolls along. So anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching that one. Next up, uh, the Digibook. I guess I got this at Target. I think my wife picked this one up for me. She was going there, and I said, would you pick this up? And she said, yes, I will. Shouldn't talk that way, but if she did, that's what she would say. And this is, uh, well, she doesn't watch many of these. And uh, she watches them occasionally just to keep up on what I bought. This is... Uh, Aladdin. One of my favorite Disney movies. If I had to pick my favorite Disney movies, I, this is just off the top of my head. I, you know, I don't have all of them laying in front of me to to, to uh, determine, but uh, Pinocchio has a special place in my heart because my dad took me to see it when I was just a little boy. Um, and I loved it then. It was scared me. Uh, I, I thought that the, the, uh, it was the fox. Fox. <clears throat> um, the guy who ultimately feeds him cigars and, and sets him adrift on the uh, on the island where everybody, all the kids turn into donkeys. Um, that one's one of my favorites. Aladdin, of course, is one of my favorites. And uh, probably The Lion King for the music. And just, I thought it was a really well done episode. But so was Aladdin. And Robin Williams was a big part of it. And I think it's um, appropriate to, you know, to recognize the genius of Robin Williams as the genie in, in this uh, he really was, it really was a perfect role for him. You know, it's like Good Morning Vietnam. He can just ramble for ages. They can capture whatever they want to capture on there. And, and uh, Robin Williams is going to come up with some beauties. But I like Aladdin. I like the whole idea of the Arabian setting and the magic lamp and the magic carpet and everything else and the genie and everything else. Is, everything's cool in this. The evil Jafar, the beautiful princess and the, 
and the monkey was it Zabu or something? I think that's his name. Anyway, you know Aladdin better than I do probably, but I, it is one of my favorite Disney movies. <clears throat> I picked up those. Uh, this is the one I thought I might have shown before, but I don't remember. I picked it up for ten dollars. I know that on FY, F, FYE. It might have been one of the ones I, I said I picked up in October, because I did pick it up in October. But uh, Poltergeist. It's, it's in pristine shape. It's. Um, it doesn't have a digital code. Didn't we have a digital code for this movie? I don't know if they came out with one. I like the digital codes when I travel uh, with my iPad and such. I'll. Uh, you know, I have it on my iPad a lot of times. It doesn't seem like it came with a digital code. I don't know if it was supposed to or not. But, you know, I love the digital books anyway. I just love the idea of having some information about the movie right within the case of the movie. Um, so I'm a big fan of the digital book. Got plenty of them. Anyway, Poltergeist. Great movie. I almost want to say it's a Stephen King movie. I mean, a uh, Steven Spielberg movie, but it's really a Toby Hooper film. But it might as well be a Steven Spielberg movie for as much influence as he's got out of that thing. Uh, next, and I get to the Criterions. We've got an Arrow release that I picked up. It's in the box here still. Let me get it out of the box. Um, everybody's, well, a lot of people picked this up. Uh, I did not pick up um, the other box that came out from Arrow. I tried, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of glad I didn't get it in a way because I was half tempted just to sell it, which is really not my normal mode. It's just that it was going for so much money. I thought it's not worth that. Um, they were selling it for, I think, 80 which is what I paid for it through Zavi, and Zavi canceled my order saying they can't get it, which is no big surprise. It sold out uh, on the Arrow site, and Arrow was their supplier, so I don't know how they thought they were going to pull that one off. But I may do a separate rant video on Zavi and just walk you through the, um, the not really trials and tribulations, but really kind of kind of really bad customer service, I thought. I mean, you don't... It was almost like they didn't even read what I wrote. They just, like, wrote whatever standard crap they wanted to spout out. Uh, and I, if I really wanted this video, uh, uh, Hellraiser, uh, the Scarlet Box, if I really wanted that Scarlet Box badly, uh, if it was something I really cared a lot about, and it really isn't, but if it was, I'd be raising holy hell with Zavi because they, they advertised it as in stock. They took money from probably... Hundreds of people and never had it in stock. Never even had one copy to, to, to distribute, and claimed it was in stock. So that that was it was not a was not a. Uh, well, actually, I, I shouldn't say it said in stock. It said pre pre order. I guess that's not the same thing as in stock. But I don't think you should take pre orders on something you don't think you can get. I mean, if they weren't sure how many they could get, um, maybe they should have limited it. Or maybe they should have worked on an agreement with the Arrow to get a thousand copies. And once those were sold, that was it. Um, I may go to another rant on that another day. We'll see. But instead, what I got is this one, Black Cat, which I actually think I would enjoy more anyway. I'm not a huge fan of the Hellraiser franchise, so I don't think I'm I'm missing a lot. But this got the sturdy box like that one does. You've got two movies here. You've got uh, both based on Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Lucio Fulci and uh, Sergio Martino. Two different uh, interpretations. I like the fact that you've got the, the both Blu-rays in here, and I think both include the DVD too, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And then you've got a really thick book, a la, a la Criterion. And we'll get to the Criterion stuff next, but you've got a really thick book here with a black cat and it smells. I don't know. I'm, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a I, I, I visually and and my sense of smell must still be pretty good, even though I've got. I'll just have to time, but I really can pick up on smells, and, and this reminds me of a lot of things, just the smell of this book, the new book, uh, really cool stuff, there's some nudity I think in here, so I can't show everything, but just flicking through a few few pictures and stuff in here, you've got, uh, I'm just turning a lot of pictures, but there's an awful lot of, trust me, there's an awful lot of words in here too, really nice booklet though, <coughs> and then you've got, uh, The movie The Black Cat, and this is uh, the Lucio Fulci. And you've got uh, there you go, there's a disc, the Blu ray, and then the DVD. Similar looking. This does have reversible artwork. I'm going to stick with what's on it. I usually do anyway. 
So clearly if I wanted to, I could flip it. Yeah, maybe sometime I might. It, it's probably not something I'm going to get out all that often, so I don't know how often I'll, I'll switch it, but the, the other artwork's kind of neat too. I think I just prefer the, the black background here to the white background. This case is bothersome to me. It's kind of like, I don't know, didn't quite get it right on there or something, the way they sealed it. Uh, it, it won't, believe me, it won't, it won't bother me that much. It won't bother me a little. And the other one's got a pristine case on it. At least it sealed it better. And this is the Sergio uh, Martino. Your vice is a locked room and only I have the key. What a title, huh? Interesting title. And then you've got uh, the Blu-ray. Yeah, the DVD, very similar art, red on the top, and then a greenish one on the bottom. This one comes with a card. I uh, hmm, don't know this movie. It was like Uli Lamel's Tenderness of the Wolves. That looks interesting just from the artwork. Push the back of the card. Good to always get a, get a, good to get an art card. And this one has the reversible art also. Um, I like this one too. Kind of get like a melted face sort of. I like this one equally as well to the one that's on it. I could easily see switching that out. I'm not going to do it right now, but I could see doing that. And then, of course, you've got the book, as I've already showed you. A ton of extras on this. I will mention some of those. It's one of those sets that uh, was originally $49, and I think if you go to Blu-ray.com, you can pick it up for $39.99. I got it through Best Buy. You can get it at Amazon. Uh, limited edition box set, 3,000 copies apparently is all there was. Uh, containing your vice as a locked room and only I have the key and the black cat. Greater 2K restorations of both films. High definition, 1080p and standard definition DVD presentations. Original Italian and English soundtracks. And then you've got, for the your vice as a locked room and only I have the key. We got through the keyhole a brand new interview with director Sergio Martino unveiling the vice making of a, rec a retrospective featuring interviews with Martino star Edwidge Fenich and screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi. Dolls of Flesh and Blood, The Gialli of Sergio Martino, visual essay by Michael McKenzie exploring the director's unique Contributions to the giallo, giallo genre. Giallo. And by giallo, I think we should take Italian. Uh, the Strange Vice of Ms. Ms. Fenish. Film historian Justin Harries on the uh, Your Vice actress's profile, prolific career. Eli Roth on Your Vice and the Genius of Martino. Reversible Sleeve and so on and so forth. And the Black Cat has... Uh, Brand new audio commentary by filmmaker and Fangoria editor Chris Alexander. From Poe into Fulci, the uh, spirit of perverseness. Film historian Stephen Trower, Thrower on Fulci's Poe Ting classic. In the Paw, Prince of the Black Cat, a look at the original Black Cat locations. Frightened Dagmar, a brand new career interview with actress Dagmar Lysander. At home with David, David Warbeck. An archive interview with the Black Cat star, so on and so forth. Reversible sleeve and everything else. So it's really nice looking set. Really enjoyed that I could get that before they sold out. <clears throat> now, last but not least, and uh, perhaps what many of my viewers would 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 have liked to have just seen, but uh, is the Criterion. So I don't. I've got two. I don't know which one's which. I'm going to just open up and find out here. Both should be Blu-rays, but let's hope. One time I ordered and I got it from Criterion and I got a DVD instead of a Blu-ray. I paid for the DVD, but they sent me the Blu-ray. I told my bunch to get the Blu-ray and they sent it to me. Hey, this is this is appropriate. This is the first one I ordered, and I just happened to open it first. The one I was most looking forward to. Uh, quite a few extras on this. This is spine number. Oh my goodness, ninety. But it's a re. Uh, reissue on the Blu-ray. 
It's a film by uh, Masaki Kobayashi, who um, does Human Condition, which I have someplace on DVD. Oh, where is that puppy? I've got a lot of stuff here. It's hard to have it handy. Yeah, right here. This is a uh, yeah, same same uh, person. This is uh, this is like a nine hour movie, five hundred seventy four minutes, almost ten hours. Uh, and I've yet to watch the whole thing. It really is like four movies in one. And I think when it was released, it was released as four independent move, four separate movies, and then it was it was all uh, part of the same story. Nine and a half hour, yeah. I've got to watch it. It was a six volume novel that they turned into a movie. So this is on my list, my short list. Well, it's getting longer sometimes. My short list of stuff I got to watch in the Criterion Collection that I behind on. <clears throat> this will be added to that. Although this this will probably get watched before that. This is only 183 minutes, so it's only three hours. I should be able to read this or watch this a lot sooner. And I think this is four different stories. It's a Quidon. Yeah. Horror. And I'll read you. I know a little bit about it. I've seen par parts of it. It's a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. Uh, 183 minutes. It's in color. Monoral. It's in, of course, Japanese with English subtitles. After more than a decade of sober political dramas and socially-minded period pieces, the great Japanese director Makashi Kobayashi uh, shifted gears dr drastically and dramatically for this rapturously stylized quartet of ghost stories featuring colorfully surreal sets, uh, there definitely are those, and luminous cinematography, absolutely. These haunting tales of demonic comeuppance Spiritual trials and were all adapted from writer uh, Lefkadio Hearn's collections of Japanese folklore, and they are ex they are extensional, uh, yeah, extensionally frightening and meticulously crafted. This version of Quite On is the original three-hour cut, never before released in the United States. So, this should be good. You've got some specials too. Uh, just because it's a three-hour movie doesn't mean you can't have some specials when you're dealing with Criterion. You got a 2K digital restoration uh, from the original cut. You've got new audio commentary by a film historian. Interview with Kobayashi from 1993. Uh, new interview with assistant director. A uh, new piece about author Lef Lefkadio Hearn, on whose versions of Japanese folk tales Quite On is based. Trailers, a new English subtitle translation, of course. And an essay by critic Jeffrey O'Brien. So let's see if I can pick out what kind of a thinly veiled... Uh, <clears throat> I've seen some defense to the new Criterion uh, stance of, of printing these things on uh, like one sheet that folds out. Uh, and I think the person who's defending it, it actually, I think somehow he's associated with the Criterion Collection. I don't know how. I'm not, I'm not ascertained his exact uh, his exact connection, but he appears to be connected somehow from some of the messages I've got from him. Nice enough guy. I'm not mentioning his name, but a nice enough guy. But his his defense is, well, I think you know would have increased the cost had they had they not done that. Well, I don't know if I buy that. I mean, talk about a forty dollar retail price on these things. Uh, I know there's a cost to restore. And, and hire the people that do the restoration, the equipment that needed to do the restoration, and so on. Uh, but that, that's been true for a while. So and I know costs go up, uh, salaries go up for these folks, and so on and so forth. But that's true for every place. So I'm not really sure why they, they have to have that increase when others have not had to have it. And we're, we're looking at another similar book. But I'm getting more used to these, but <clears throat> quite frankly, I don't have to like them. There's the booklet that you've got. I know it's a fold-out. It talks about, uh, you've got one long article here. And then on this side, you've got kind of the uh, credits and so on. Yeah, I'm not going to be a fan of these. I, I don't know what, you know, you can talk to me about whatever you want. I'm not going to be a fan of these of this type. I think it's, a, I think it's better than nothing. Yes. 
<clears throat> but I still feel it's a cheap uh, cop off for something that's supposed to be deluxe. You know, look look at Arrow, what Arrow's doing. Now, Criterion's been along, around longer than Arrow, to my knowledge, uh, and has uh, a pretty decent. Now, they, don't, they, they may not sell the uh, copies of these that, that Arrow sells to some of them because these aren't mainstream films for the most part. But uh, you also don't have to manufacture as many, so. I don't know. Love the movie. Love the idea that it came to the Criterion Collection. Love the love the cover on it. What I've seen from scenes on uh, Criterion.com and YouTube and so on, it's going to be a beautifully colorful, wonderful cinematography. And these Japanese folklore tales are going to come off uh, from what I've seen, like I said, very, very well. So I'm looking forward to quite on. Well, now I know what the other one is because my process of elimination, this one's heavy compared to that one. I wonder what that means. I'm not, I'm not seeing the packaging of this, so I don't know how this one's packaged. But I would tend to believe, based on the heaviness of it, that it's not going to be a standard uh, amore type case. What do you know? That would be correct. <clears throat> you can tell from the weight of these things. And this is director approved, too. I've never owned this movie. I am a fan of his work. Spine 779 from 2001. 146, another long, 146 minutes. This one's in English. Um, yeah. This is a beautiful, I can't wait to open this one because it's going to, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, love the art on it. Love the cover. Let me get to it and show you what I'm talking about. But Mulholland Drive. Love the out of focus on the two uh, lead actresses here. Maybe sharper the David Lynch's and even Mulholland Drive starts to fade out there. I'll be putting this on the inside because I, I won't put it on the outside here. In fact, I'll try to open this up without taking the plastic off and then I can leave that plastic on there. Sometimes it's a tricky proposition. I've got a knife over there, which I probably could use, but I figure it works equally well if I can get it in there and I can. So we'll at least get this off of here. The point where I can get at this. This is usually a bad idea. I usually end up having to take the whole thing off eventually anyway, but at least for the short term, I'm able to work with it and uh, yeah, kind of deal with it this way. Just so I can get it off. I'll cut this plastic off later. Sure, I can't yet. Not yet. Struggle, struggle, struggle to get the right in. Okay, right there. Oh, about a moment, quite. I'm going to do it now. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, this I have seen this movie years ago. I don't remember the significance of the key, though. Obviously, it has significance. Uh, your faith can be restored sometimes, Criterion. <clears throat> so here's what we got with Mulholland Drive, folks. You've got a really beautiful... Um, you've got this. And this opens up like this. And this opens up like that. There is the disc. And then there's really no art behind it. That's just fine by me. So that's the Blu-ray there. And then the reason why it has to be in this box, of course, is because it has a booklet. Not as thick as the Black Cats, but you know what? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, this has got, uh, just flip through real quick, make sure there's nothing here that can't be seen. With David Lynch, you never know what you're going to see as you flip through this thing. It looks pretty okay. Okay. Uh, I'll get to what this is about shortly. There's a picture of Mr. Lynch. 
He of Twin Peaks fame. Uh, Videodrome. Uh, Eraserhead. The... Oh, I almost went in the wrong direction. No, no, not that. David Lynch was not... Uh, I'm thinking of David Cronenberg. I got the two mixed up. He's not Videodrome. He's Eraserhead, Twin Peaks. And uh, Mulholland Drive, certainly. And others. <clears throat> But those are the those are the ones that come to mind quickly. Yeah, I don't know why I confuse them with David Cronenberg. David Cron well, David Cronenberg and David Lynch. Cronenberg's a little more <clears throat> I don't know, he's a little more visually bizarre, maybe sometimes, and Lynch is more like psychologically bizarre, but they're both bizarre nonetheless. And they I think Lynch is, gets into more sexual erotic things than Cronenberg does for the most part. Um, beautifully presented though. And how nice it is to see that booklet back in there in this kind of packaging that, that personally I prefer over the plastic cases. Some people don't. I do. I like this better. Would have loved it quite. I would have come in a case like this, but that's okay. Can't complain when you've got three hours worth of movie, which is probably going to look fantastic in the 2K. This is a 4K digital restoration on Mulholland Drive. Uh, supervised by director David Lynch and director of photography Peter Deming with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack, new interviews with Lynch, Deming, actors Naomi Watts, Justin Thoreau, and Laura Herring, composer Angelo Badalamonte, production designer Jack Fisk, and casting director Johanna Ray. On set footage, deleted scenes, a trailer, plus a booklet featuring an interview with Lynch from the 2005 edition of Filmmaker and writer Chris Rodley's book, Lynch on Lynch. Uh, blonde Betty Elms, Naomi Watts, has only just arrived in Hollywood to become a movie star when she meets an enigmatic brunette with amnesia, Laura Herring. Meanwhile, as the two set off to solve the second woman's identity, identity situation, filmmaker Adam Keschler, Justin Thoreau, uh, Kesher, not Keschler, runs into ominous trouble while casting his latest project. David Lynch's seductive and scary version of Los Angeles' Dream Factory is one of the true masterpieces of the new millennium, a uh, feat, no, a tale of love, jealousy, and revenge like no other. So, we're really looking forward to Mulholland Drive. Uh, I thought about this one or um, Dress to Kill, but this one won out in a landslide. Uh, it was always going to be quite on though this this month. That was always going to be the what I picked up. <clears throat> really wasn't anything else. Um, well, there's one other one, but I don't, I'm not going to get it. Not this time around. Um, I'm saving up for a big box set that's coming out in early December. Uh, when I say big box, it's, it's only about a hundred bucks, but it adds up quickly when it's Christmas time. So. Kind of said I'd go easy in the Criterion Collection so I could pick up this other thing that's coming out and more on that when I get it. So that's it, guys. This is Mulholland Drive, Quite On, uh, Disney movie, Pixar movie, a couple Pixar movies, right? No, one Pixar movie. I don't know what the heck uh, Pixels is. It's not Pixar, but it is Pixels. And, uh, oh, I'll throw this one in, too, as long as I'm showing stuff. This is, a lot of this stuff was for the kids, you might, as you might imagine. I'll look forward to watching it. They watch this all the time, and I finally had to pick it up on DVD. We, we never owned it on DVD. I don't use any extras, but it was under 10 bucks. We got the first one and the second one. The kids love this movie. All of them do. And it's cheaper by the dozen and cheaper by the dozen, too. So um, I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're entertaining, and they're worth a few laughs, no doubt about it. So I think Steve Martin was good in both. So, yeah. And that is it. That's the haul. Of course, the Black Cats, Quite On, uh, Mulholland Drive with David Lynch. Can't go wrong with those titles. Uh, what did you get from the Criterion Collection? What else did you pick up lately? I don't know what I'm going to call this video, um, but it's going on fairly long, so uh, but I haven't done one in a while. I owe a couple um, videos for a couple contests that are out there, at least one contest that's out there that I want to do and show some support for the person's channel. I, I don't really care if I win the prize, but I do want to show some support. I may already be too late. I don't, I don't think it went on for all that long, so I may have blown it. But 
uh, I'll check it out and see what I can st I can still enter into the contest, and we'll go kind of go from there. All right, guys, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thoughts still out to the folks in Paris, France. That's not going to go away. Uh, those thoughts aren't going to go away for a long time. It was a terrible event, and uh, I'm truly sorry that it had to happen and truly sorry that uh, this planet's what it is sometimes. Uh, we will get better. All right, guys, take care.